and welcome back to Between Two Wings. I'm your host, Emily Norman, and today we have Daniel Baker with us, who is the CEO of FlyGoware. If you're not familiar with FlyGoware, it's a very popular flight tracking app, and it's also a global leader for aviation data services. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be here. Thanks so much, Emily. Of course. So we'd like to start off by just explaining our backgrounds, and we are both native Houstonians. ForeFlight right. and FlyGoware are both based in Houston, so I thought it would only be appropriate to show one of our home airports here. We're taking out of Hobby, a site we're probably both very familiar with, but tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, now you're making me feel bad. I'm not representing the, <laughs> the hometown here, but this is a pretty cool picture I took uh, just a couple of weekends ago. A friend of mine uh, just got an SR-22T and wanted to go flying around the mountains. And so I think one of the best photos I got was on approach to Telluride. And it's really cool. It's just that you kind of go between some some canyons and it's just sitting there on a ledge. It couldn't be any more unique or picturesque. And not only was it cool to, to land there, but the, the technology in airplanes has come a really long way. I've been flying for almost 20 years. And to think about the first time I flew in the mountains of Colorado versus doing it in a modern Sears SR-22, a, a lot's changed throughout the industry. I can only imagine a lot has changed. And how often do you keep up with flying? Well, it's one of those things, the more that I get involved in aviation, in some ways, the less I have time to do it. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm pretty active now. I think that uh, once a week, every other week, I think is is where I am. I think that uh, travel's picking back up and that's going to help me from a, from a flying perspective. For sure. And let's talk a little bit about it. What was the inspiration for Flag Aware? How did they get started? So I have always had a passion for airplanes and for flying, and really my background is in software development. And I got involved in the first internet service provider in Texas in the early 1990s and uh, learned a lot about that and saw the evolution of e-commerce and the web and email and, and all these things, and then got involved in a number of other software and tech startups. And none of them were aviation related. I always had this sort of side interest or passion and uh, wanted wanted to fly. And so I started taking flying lessons in the end of 2002 and loved it as much as I had ever thought. And it wasn't long after I started flying around Texas in a 182 that I realized, hey, it would be awesome if people could track my flights and if people knew when I was going to land. I flew between actually Austin and Hobby a lot. So your background is, is familiar. <laughs> and uh, people didn't know, is he, has he taken off yet? Is he, you know, deviating around a thunderstorm. And so it was really, a, a, and is a labor of love, but it was a passion. And the idea was, how can I help both myself and my family and then other people who like to fly around in small airplanes so that their friends and family know where they are and meet them at the airport. And it's evolved quite a bit since then. Yeah, I can only imagine you start off with one ground station and now you have, you know, 25,000, I think in over 200 countries. What are some of the technological differences that you you know see from those early days to now? Yeah, it was really relying on uh, both the FAA data in the very early days, and then when ADSB started to evolve, we got excited about it. But back then, you know, there weren't many airplanes that were emitting ADSB. It was really the long haul airliners, particularly those that operated in and out of Europe, where they were really starting to invest more in Mode S and ADSB technology. But we started building ground stations in 2009, and they were huge. It was uh, like two or three shoeboxes. They cost us thousands of dollars. We could make one or two a month, and they they would only last a few months just in terms of our engineering uh, sophistication at the time. But we iterated again and again and again on that. And now they fit in the palm of your hand, a little USB power plug ranges in the hundreds of miles, and they cost about $75. And so that decrease in cost and increase in reliability is really what allowed us to grow that ground station. And it's it's amazing that that early interest in it from FlightAware's perspective with the ADSB mandate in 2020 means that th the industry equipped the airplanes with ADSB over the last couple of decades while we were building this infrastructure out. And so um, it was a combination of passion, luck, and timing. Uh, and suddenly we have essentially worldwide coverage for flight tracking. And it's uh, not just for, like I said, the long haul airliners, but now you know, business jets and GA. And uh, of course, we have both UAT, the 978 megahertz receivers, as well as 1090. Uh, our 1090 coverage is, is probably a lot better at this point. That was the, the earlier technology.
technology, but we continue to invest in, in 978 with the hopes that we can have our, the coverage be just as good. It's super important because um, people really enjoy tracking flights on FlightAware and when yeah. they're flying VFR <laughs> and they have maybe a 978 uh, UAT transponder, they want that same level of coverage. So we're working really hard to get it for them. Yeah, I definitely think AvGeeks around the world, when they hear a plane in the air, you know, they're pulling up flag aware and like, what is that? What's what's going over my head right now? So you mentioned ADSB out or ADSB in general, and I think we can all agree that the mandate did make flying safer. Just to put things in perspective, how much more traffic are you guys able to to represent? now that this mandate's in place. Yeah, it's tremendous. And I think that it really touches on an interesting point, which is that for years, there have been a lot of statistics around how many flight hours there are in commercial aviation and how many flights and flight hours there are in business aviation. But how many flights and flight hours in general aviation has largely been somewhat of a uh, sampling exercise or you know, research or surveying. And the FAA, for example, sends out an annual survey uh, to each registered aircraft asking how, how much you flew. And it's because there was no way to track it. And so there is a tremendous amount that, that we're seeing, whether it be um, tr you know flight training, banner towing, uh, helicopter operations. It's, it's remarkable. And then what's amazing too is there's a non-trivial amount of turbine aircraft repositioning that's VFR. And those are the sorts of things they might take off from one end towered field and go to another uh, and then back. And that operation would have been completely undetected by uh, the, you know, the prior generation of technology. So it has changed not only you know, traffic awareness. I mean, it's saving lives, there's no question. Um, avionics have it. Obviously, four flight integrates with a number of things that display it. That saves lives. Uh, but situational awareness and being able to support those sorts of flight operations. Yeah, it's definitely incredible technology that makes everything just a little bit more safer. So not just flight tracking, you guys are actually evolving and you're incorporating machine learning and you're actually making predictions now with FlagAware Foresight. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we're really excited. And this is basically the next generation of what FlightAware can do, which is that we spent the better part of 15 years building out this global network and starting to provide this to general aviation, business aviation, commercial aviation, cargo, all these different folks. And then as we started to say, well, what, what's next? We looked at why are people tracking flights or why is an airline customer looking at FlightAware, looking at, at FlightAware data? Really what they're trying to see is, um, is the flight on time? Is it going to have to go around weather? When is it going to arrive? Is it going to be early or late? How is that going to affect the gates? And those sorts of things affect every aspect of flying, whether it be from GA to commercial aviation. So we took our uh, 15 plus years of raw data. So this is petabytes of data. So a petabyte is 1,024 terabytes, which is 1,024 gigabytes. This is a lot of data. Yeah. and created machine, machine learning models that can take our live data and look at what's going on in the world's airspace and see how that's played out in the past. And using machine learning, it can create incredibly accurate predictions for when flights are going to arrive. So our launch customer in the US was a major airline, Delta Airlines, very proud of that. And they're taking our machine learning predictions, which we're calling flight over foresight, to predict when airplanes are landing at the runway and then arriving at the gate. And they can push this all throughout their system to do things like figure out um, you know, gate, gate allocation and provide this information to passengers and reset expectations and make decisions around it. That's something that we're really proud of. I can only imagine. I know you're not going to stop there. So what is next or what's new with FlightAware? Well, as it relates to general aviation, we're really excited that we have a new product called FlightAware Aviator. And if you think about the history of FlightAware, as I was talking about, it started with me as a general aviation pilot, and then it's evolved into business and commercial aviation. And we finally said, all right, we need to take all this technology that we've made for the industry and bring it to general aviation. So it's created by the FlightAware pilots and it's for GA pilots. So FlightAware Aviator is a subscription product that allows GA pilots to have access to all of those innovations, things like FBO coordination, um, foresight predictive ETAs, uh, historical flight logs, and viewing extended transponder data. So seeing, for example, the altitude pre-select or heading pre-select or navigational mode, if your airplane supports that, look, looking before your flight and saying, well, what's the active runway? Because we, we can look at what's going on at the airports you're flying to and from. But one of the really cool things is um, called VFR flight intents. 
And this is where you can submit some information about your flight, like the destination on our website or in the mobile app. And that's kind of like filing a flight plan. It doesn't send it to anyone but ourselves, but now it's on our website and on the mobile app. So your VFR flight can be tracked just like an IFR flight with full mapping, with ETA predictions, with FBO coordination. And it can even involve our ready to taxi surface movement as well. So you can now see the airplane. Oh, you know, it's powered on at this FBO. We'll identify where it's parked. We'll show the airplane taxiing out. We'll provide an ETA to the destination. So it's a really, really cool set of features that have been really what we've been working on for business and commercial aviation that we can finally bring to GA, which is how we, how we got started. And so we're really excited about it. Yeah, and I know all pilots love to nerd out about data and just replaying everything. And so this is going to be incredible for the GA community. You mentioned that, you know, a lot of this is flight pilots at FlagAware who are, you know, in the products, they're, they're doing the actual flying themselves. How many or how often have you been out flying for personal reasons and an idea came up for FlagAware and you actually implemented it? Yeah, it is. It is amazing. And I think it's a tough thing for businesses in aviation, which is you don't get to use the product as much as you might like, because you're in the office and you're working with customers and you're not out flying. I have never had a flight that didn't find uh, you know, a feature opportunity, a way to extend a feature, maybe a bug that needs to get fixed. And so we've got a FlightAware uh, flying program that helps uh, support and fund flying for FlightAware employees. And it has just been so successful and rewarding because not only are people flying more and finding ideas and issues, and that's where FlightAware Aviator came out of, um, but also, you know, we all f- fly out together and we'll meet, meet at a restaurant. And then you say, well, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this as where I was tracking your flight. So it's not just tracking your flights, it's tracking your, your friends' flights. And so it's, I think it's really, really important to have that relationship with the product that you're using it. And, um, you know, sort of to, to the point about FlightAware Aviator, a lot of FlightAware employees have access to all the commercial features for testing. And it's frustrating when we have uh, some technology that we're using ourselves that we don't have a way to make available to this community that we're so passionate about. And so all of those things came together, both the product ideas, the features, and, and here we are. So it's it's fun. And I think the, maybe the point that you, you, you're you making is we, we should all be flying more, right? Yeah, I think we should just go fly right now. <laughs> exactly, that's right. <laughs> So Flyware has been around since 2005. It seems like you're really passionate about it. You really love what you're creating and being around the people at Flyware. Is there any other takeaways at the end of the day when you just feel grateful or, you know, happy to be involved in this company? Well, I think that it's really fortunate that, you know, my two major passions for, for work are technology and aviation. And so to have the opportunity to do both of them is is just terrific. And then what I've enjoyed particularly about it is I'm working day in and day out with people that share those passions, right? Everyone wants to be in this industry and working on technology. And so it's a group of like-minded folks that respect each other and are so smart. And uh, you never have a meeting where you don't learn something or, uh, you know, great minds don't come together and produce a great result. And so to have the opportunity to day in and day out work with smart, fun people that I respect and then have you just this outsized impact on the on the industry that's making travel safer, more efficient across the world, across GA and BA and commercial aviation uh, is it's a dream come true. And so it's fun to have that impact, uh, to be part of it and to work with such a great team. For sure. And it sounds like company culture is very important at FlyAware. Um, I know it is at ForeFlight as well. What are some ways that you try to maintain that? What's well, tougher these days with so much remote work, particularly the, the last year, um, and I think that uh, it's going to get better as we can all start to get together more. We actually had our first in-person uh, happy hour event a couple of weeks ago, and the attendance was off the charts. And you realize, well, a lot of people do like you know the flexibility of remote work, but getting together with that team is awesome. So we're putting together a lot more events. We're working on a Houston get together event uh, later this year. We've got a big year end event where we're going to we're going to kick things off, and then uh, I think we need more flying events. And, you know, you mentioned the the culture, which is important here. And also at ForeFlight, we should do a flight aware ForeFlight fly out from Houston, uh, maybe when it cools down a little bit in the fall. Uh, yeah, I will start planning that today. So coming Let's soon, the ForeFlight <laughs> fly aware um, fly out. <laughs> like-minded folks, new, new great ideas. This is there what the go. industry is all about. 
Always, always coming up with new things. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. And for those who are not super familiar with FlyAware, look them up on flyware.com and also check out their social media profiles. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Lots of fun. And as always, thank you everyone for tuning into this episode of Between Two Wings. We'll see you next time.